Uh, good morning and good afternoon to you students and uh, I hope that you've been enjoying your e-learning, the very first e-learning of your secondary school life. Now for this chemistry lesson, we'll be continuing the topic on exploring the diversity of matter by chemical composition. And here we have Pop the Weasel who will help us to understand this better. Now the teachers have already started on this topic last week. So let's just do a quick recap, starting with this question of what is matter made up of? And to answer this question, let's have a look at Pop the Weasel. Now what is Pop the Weasel made up of? Well, he is a Lego figure. And so if we break up this Lego figure and you break it down, well, of course you get Lego bricks, right? Now imagine this copper coin here. This is a copper coin, an American coin. Now, if we were to break this copper coin down, break it down to as small as possible, you would find that it is also made up of many small particles, right? Similar to how Pop the Weasel is made out of many smaller Lego bricks. And these particles, scientists have given them a name, and they're called atoms. So all matter uh, is in fact made out of many small particles called atoms. Now having known that all matter is made out of small particles called atoms, we can also classify matter based on the type and arrangement of atoms found inside it, or basically its chemical composition. And last week you have been introduced to these three terms elements, compounds, and mixtures. Now, matter can be classified into these three categories based on its chemical composition. So let's have a closer look. So in this video, we'll be doing a recap of what is an element, what is a compound, and also what is a mixture. Mm, this is new for us. Now, all of this can be found in your textbook A uh, and on these pages. So go and read them up as well. So let's begin with elements. Now, what are elements? Well, elements are a little bit like this red color Lego brick structure. Now, if I took this red brick structure and broke it down, what would I get? Well, you'd be right to say that you only get red colored bricks. Now, elements are similar in this sense. Elements are substances which are made up of only one type of atom. In the same way that this red brick structure is only made out of red color bricks, if you broke down an element, you would only find one type of atom in it. Now, this is not too different to the definition that you've already learned from the textbook, which is that elements are substances that cannot be broken down into two or more simpler substances by chemical methods. Basically, if you break down an element, you will not get some other simpler substance. But just like when we break down this red color brick structure, we only got red color bricks. There was nothing else uh, simpler that we could get out of it. Now, of course, the other really important thing that you've learned is that elements can be found in the periodic table, right? This uh, table that I have a miniature one on here. So to find out whether a substance is a chemical element, just look for it in the periodic table. If it is found there, then it is an element. If it's not found there, then it's either, either a compound or a mixture. Now, copper can be found in the periodic table and it has a symbol Cu. So copper is an element. And if we took copper, a copper coin for example, and we break it down, and we keep breaking it down, now you would only find one type of atom inside. You would only find copper atoms inside it. Similarly, tin is also another chemical element. Tin can also be found in the periodic table, and it has the symbol Sn. Now, if you break down this tin can, and break it, break it, break it down, you would only find one type of atom you only find tin atoms inside it. So that's what makes copper and tin an element. It only contains one type of, of atom, and if you break it down, 
Even by chemical methods, you will not get two or more simpler substances. You will only get one substance, which is essentially the same, copper to copper atoms. Now let's move on to compounds. Now compounds are a little bit like this structure here, which I've called the Reblou structure. Yeah, it's like French. Reblou structure. Now if you take this Reblou structure and you break it down, and you break it down, and you break it down, what will you get? Well, you'd be right to say that you get a mixture of red colored bricks and blue colored bricks. Right? No longer are you only getting one type of brick. There's now more than one type. So compounds are substances that are made up of more than one type of atom chemically combined. Right? Just like how this red blue structure here is made up of more than one type of brick which are combined, compounds are substances that are made up of more than one type of atom which are chemically combined. This of course is similar to the other definition that you've learned from the textbook which is that compounds are substances that are made up of two or more different elements chemically combined. So let's look at some examples. For example, here I have a very nice bottle of water, which you know has the chemical symbol H2O. Now that tells you what elements water is made up of. Right? The H stands for hydrogen, look at your periodic table, and the O stands for oxygen. Now if I were to look at water really, really up close, this is what it might look like. Now that might look confusing to you, but just wait a while. So you see that there are kind of blue particles and red particles, right? Blue balls and red balls. Now the red balls represent hydrogen and the blue balls or blue particles represent oxygen. So this is how some people represent water if you look at it very up close. Now if you break water down, what will you get? Well, you would get the elements oxygen and hydrogen. So again, this is what it means that compounds are made up of two or more elements chemically combined. When I took some oxygen atoms and hydrogen atoms and I combined them, I got water out of it. Okay, of course, they combine in a certain way, and that's something that we'll learn about uh, later on. Now we've seen what elements and compounds look like up close. Elements we know are only made up of one type of atom. Right? If you break down an element, you will not get two or more simpler substances. You will only get one type of atom. And we represent this by having all these uh, circles the same color. Compounds on the other hand, if you break down a compound, you will find more than one type of atom. So right, more than one type of atom and they are chemically combined. So you represented that by having, you see, when you break down a compound, you get more than one type of atom, so it's different colored uh, balls and they are chemically combined. The balls are joined to one another. So compounds have more than one type of atom which are chemically combined. Um, said differently, compounds are made up of more than one type of element chemically combined together. So now we're going to look at mixtures, okay, but before that, let's have some questions. So just look at this here, this uh, little diagram. Is this an element or a compound? Well, simple it is. An element because there's only one type of atom, right? Balls of one color, one type of atom, one type of particle. So it's an element. Now, how about this one? Now, this here, you'd be right to say that it is a compound. It represents a compound because there's more than one type of atom, right? We've got the, the green one which represents atoms of a certain element and the red one which represents atoms of another kind of element and they are chemically combined, they're joined together. So this is a compound. Now how about this one? Is this an element or a compound? Now the answer is this is an element. 
And the reason why is that there's only one type of atom. Again, there's only one colored ball, one type of atom. So if you break it down, you'll only get one type of atom. There's not, there's not two or more simpler substances. You only get one type of atom. And you might have got chin trait because they are kind of like joined together, right? But that doesn't matter. An element is an element. As long as when you break it down, you only get one type of atom. Now, how about this one? Is this an element or a compound? Now think very carefully about it. First, is there only one type of atom or more than one type of atom? Right, there is actually more than one type of atom. So it's not an element, right? Because elements only have one type of atom. But is it a compound? Could it be a compound? Well, the question comes, you might notice that the atoms, even though they're different, they're not joined together. They're not chemically combined. So in fact, this does not represent a compound, right? Because even though there's more than one type of atom, they are not chemically combined. This is in fact a mixture. It is a mixture of two different elements, right? On one hand, the red color uh, atoms represent one element, and the green color atoms represent a second element. You'll remember that a compound, the elements were chemically combined, they were joined together, right? But in the mixture, right, they're not chemically combined. And that's where I'm going to give you the definition of a mixture. So what is a mixture? Well, a mixture is a substance that is made up of two or more different substances that are mixed but are not chemically combined. Right, so in our previous example, we saw that there was two, there was the red elements and also the green elements. Okay, forgive me, I'm going to draw green elements like this. Right? The red elements and the green elements, and they were two different substances, right? Red element and green element. They were mixed, but they were not chemically combined. And therefore, it was a mixture of two elements. Now, with that definition of a mixture in mind, I want you to try this. What do you think this is? Well, first, look at it. Just now we said, right, that this here and this here, this represents a compound, right? Because this compound is made out of two elements, the red and the green, which are chemically combined. And this one here, it looks like a compound too. In fact, this was the example that we used uh, for water. So this is another compound. So what we have here actually is two compounds mixed together. So this is a mixture of two different compounds, right? This first one here and the second one here. Now finally, let's look at one more example. What is this? Why don't you pause the video and think about it for a while? Well, this, you might have saw this first and said, yeah, this is a compound, right? We thought about it in the last slide. It's a compound made out of two different elements which are combined together, right? The red and the blue combined together. On the other hand then, what's this? Is this a compound? Well, there's only one type of atom here, the green one, and it's not combined with anything else. So this is in fact an element. So what we have here actually is a mixture, but it's a mixture of an element, the green one, and the compound, the blue and red combined. And this is a mixture because the element is not combined with the compound, right? They're just mixed together and they're kind of separate from one another. So let's end off again with the definition of a mixture. So just remember that a mixture uh, is made up of two or more different substances which are mixed kind of together, but they are not chemically combined. And that's all. Alright, see you for the next video.